Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings here. And do you have an old bar stool, a leather ottoman, a fake leather chair, something that needs a little TLC? You don't want to pay to have it recovered, but you want to give it an updated look? I'm here to help. Okay, I'm going to be painting this faux leather bar stool, and I'm going to be showing you close up what I'm going to be doing. Now, this is actually, can you see that? It's peeling. So, first thing I'm going to do is, or what I've been doing, is I go around and I pull off any loose leather. I don't want anything that is going to peel up after I paint it. So I take my nail along it, any place that's loose, um, I peel it back until it's, it's, you know, nothing is left on here unless it's securely attached to the piece of furniture. So you're gonna go around and you're just going to pick off any bits that are loose. Uh, Cause I'm gonna paint right over those. So you can see all the bare spots where I picked it away. Okay, you do need to clean your piece. Just use a mild natural cleaner. Um, make sure after you clean it that you do take water over it to make sure you got all the residue from your cleaner taken off of your piece of furniture and we're ready to paint. I'm gonna be painting with Dixie Belle paints um, and water and I'm gonna be sealing it with some easy peasy spray wax but this is gonna be really cool, really fast, really easy so keep watching. Here we go. Okay, so I've got most of my peeled off leather removed. And if I find any more, I can peel it off after I paint it and I can touch up the paint then. And I got it all clean. So now I'm gonna put on a base color. And my base color, I want this to be a pretty dark color. I don't want it to be this dark, but I want it to be dark because the body of my legs, I'm gonna be painting in a color called collard greens, which is what I do a lot of our cabinetry in our entertainment area in the collard greens. It's my favorite color. So this is gonna be a deep earthy green. So this I want to be a deep earthy brown. So let's go ahead and start my base color. I'm just gonna start off with chocolate. It's a medium brown. I'm also gonna be adding in areas to lighten it up, a color called pine cone, which is just a slightly lighter brown. I'll be highlighting all my edges to give it some depth, depth with the color from Dixie Belle. I, I use them in my own personal bottles, but this is Dixie Belle's coffee bean. And I might add a little bit of red called muscadine wine just for some depth. We'll see how it goes. Let's start off with get our base color on and then we'll decide what's next as we get these colors on. Now this is, this is I'm not adding any additives to this paint. I'm just gonna be painting with a wet brush, okay? Here we go. Okay, I'm just taking a missing bottle and I'm missing my brush so that it's a little bit damp. And I'm just going to apply my paint. Like I said, I'm not adding any additives or anything into this. Dixie Belle's paint is very flexible. So you're probably wondering, well, won't that crack? Um, no, I have experimented on some other leather pieces and I've had great success with it. So I'm pretty confident with this, okay? So I am putting on a coat, nice thin coat of the chocolate. Okay, look at how beautiful it already is. Just getting an update. But we're gonna be adding some depth and dimension to make it look more like a, it was purchased this way. Um, colors are browns. You wanna go in long strokes so you don't have any stop and start marks. You want it to be nice and smooth. So you go back and forth. You're smoothing out any of your brush strokes. There we go. This project takes very little paint too. If I was doing one solid color, I'd be able to do this in two coats and that's it. But I'm gonna be adding multiple colors in, so. Okay, I'm getting that fabric that I peeled the leather off of, making sure it gets saturated with the paint. I want that paint to soak in. If you have difficulty, if your leather has um, difficulty soaking in where you peeled it off, you can spritz that part of the leather gently with some water. I use a misting bottle so that I can control the amount of water that I get. That water is gonna open up those fibers. It's gonna allow that paint just to get right in that cording that you have on your piece of furniture. You know, that trim on the edge. That water is gonna allow it to seep right in there like a dye. Okay, I'm not worried about getting it on the stool because I'm gonna be painting the stool. fabric along there. So I'm gonna spritz it with a little bit of water just so it, it'll allow the paint to soak in. Okay, 
So I got my first coat on. Looks great, doesn't it? Okay, so my first coat on, I'm gonna let this dry for probably about an hour uh, before I come back and work with it again. Now remember, the only place I sprayed water was along this fabric trim that goes around the edge so that the fibers in that fabric, that, that cording that goes around it, would open up and allow the paint to soak in. So I did not spray my piece with water. I just used a damp brush and the Dixie Belle paint. Um, this is one coat and I sprayed water along the edge just so that fabric would soak in the paint like a dye. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit for about an hour and I'll come back and we'll start doing the colors and the blending and the having fun. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so it's been about an hour, my paint is dry, but look it, I'm gonna press down, see? No cracking. And that what this paint is flexible. Okay, so now I'm going to add a few other colors just for added dimension. I've got some pine cone, sandbar, coffee bean, and muscadine wine. And in no rhyme or reason, I'm just going to kind of put the colors over just for some dimension. And I've got two little brushes here, and I will intermix the brushes. It doesn't matter because we'll be blending anyway. I'm going to just mist with just a little bit of water, barely any water, just so that I can be able to blend. So I mist it up here. And I'm gonna put some of the pine cone in random areas. Just spotting it all over. I don't wanna cover up the chocolate com completely. And I'll dip into some of the sandbar. Kinda of get those colors in here. And the nice thing is, is if I don't like how I'm blending it or I don't like my color combination, then I can go back and repaint it. I might put a little bit of the red, the muscadine wine, in a few places, not a lot. I'm gonna come back with the coffee bean. The coffee bean is just the dark brown I'll be putting around the edges. Might put some randomly throughout. See, I'm just spotting it on. You can see the colors. Spotting those colors just all over. I'm gonna take a clean brush. Doesn't matter which brush you use. And I'm just going to in a circle, just kind of smear these colors together. Just kind of pouncing and swirling at the same time. And you can decide which colors you want to pounce and add in there for dimension. You can even do this with greens and yellows if you want a beachy scene. See, I'm just pouncing these colors together. And if I decide I want some more dark brown in there, which I kind of think I do, I'm not using a lot of water. I'm just having the water to help with the blending. I'm gonna mist it again. And I'm gonna add some of this coffee bean around my edges. So that it's dark, darker around the edges. So it looks more aged. I'm just doing this front half right now. The other half I'll do in fast motion, but this front half I'm doing just so you can see it close up. So I'm pouncing these colors together and taking the clean brush and pouncing them. To give it some depth around the outside and I will take a close up picture of this and then we'll keep working on the rest. Okay. So I've got those colors blended in. I'm gonna do the rest and then I can come back and I can really um, decide where I need darker colors. So let's keep on going. And I'm gonna pounce my colors back on again for the second half. Mist some water on here so that my paint can move. Not using a lot of water, just misting a little bit of water on there just to help with the paint movement. And let me do the rest. I'm gonna do this in fast motion.
So we get a nice brown leather now look. And you can see the subtle shading. I did my brush in a circle, if you saw. I did it in a circle just to blend those colors together. But there's some lighter colors and some darker colors to give it some uh, age look. Um, I'm going to let this dry overnight. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to wax the top. I'm going to work on the other bar stool next. Um, so Because I, I got two of these. Now you will see, and I'll, do, I'll, I'll put a close-up picture. You will see your fabric because we peeled that leather off. So it is gonna be a different texture than our, our faux leather that is in good condition. This is gonna be noticeable, because it's fabric, but only when it's close up. And it's better than throwing it away, but there's no getting over you know, the fabric that's under the leather where it's peeled off versus the look of the faux leather here. Um, so you will be able to see just a slight texture difference. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit overnight and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna show you how to seal it with the Easy Peasy Spray Wax. Okay, my paint is dried, I have both stools done. I, I did this one a little bit darker than this one, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna show you how to seal them and I'm also gonna show you this paint does not crack. See, I can sit here and pounce on it, push all the air out and it's not gonna crack. So that's the great thing about this. And how I want to seal it is I'm going to use Easy Peasy Spray Wax, which is a water-based wax in a spray form. You shake it up really, really well. Use a cloth. I, I like to use my um, Dixie Belle applicator pads. They're like a terry cloth pad. I like to use these. I shake it up really good. And then all you have to do is apply it. Spray it all over your surface. Get, it, get your surface all covered. Now I recommend doing a sealer 24, 24 hours or more after you've painted. I wouldn't do it the same day you painted. You want that paint to dry and have a chance to uh, completely settle on your piece of furniture. So I just sprayed it and I'm going to show you a close up. All you have to do. And if you ever need to update your wax, like if you use this piece of furniture very often and you can see that um, areas are the um, the slight sheen that it leaves, it doesn't leave much of a sheen, it dries as a flat, uh, flat finish. But if you see where areas are wearing off as far as your sheen, then you just reapply your wax whenever you need it. It dries in 30 minutes and it cures in six hours. So you don't have to wait for cure time. I, it will be ready to go for people to use this. I'm gonna let people go ahead and get on it tomorrow. But there we go, I'm gonna get along my sides. But this is how easy it is to wax. Get my sides a little bit better. Okay, but I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to paint leather, faux leather, vinyl. Okay, like I said, this will dry in 30 minutes and it'll be fully cured in six hours. And when I'm saying cured, I mean cured, not just fully dry, it'll be cured in six hours. And you can reapply as needed. Okay, let me show you close up. Okay, set this off to the side. Look at that finish. Remember what they look like before? I'll insert a before picture. I did paint the legs in a, a dark green called collard greens. I can use that easy peasy spray wax to seal the legs too. Ah, but there we go. And once again, look at that. I got it. It's got wet wax on it, so I'm going to have to blend that together. But I just want you to show you that the paint is flexible. It's not going to crack. And here's the other one. So, see? It feels just like the normal vinyl. I got to wipe in my hand prints since that wax is not dry yet. But I wanted to show you just how easy it is to update your faux leather, your vinyl, your leather. I do not recommend this with suede whatsoever. You don't want to paint suede, but there we go. Got a new look. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was fun, it's easy, and look at this great new look. Now granted, I am gonna go back and darken up all these edges. When this wax dries, it's water-based. I can paint over it if I need to. So these are gonna be in completely opposite sides of an island, so it won't be as noticeable, but I did notice you know, I did one for one video and another for another. And so I didn't do them at the exact same time. And I did a little darker on this one than I did this one. So this one just has to have some more of the coffee bean brought around the edges. But I wanted to get these finished up for the video. But yeah, 
quick and easy and you see how soft and pliable they are without doing any cracking. Okay, well hopefully this inspires you to give this a try. I have all of the information down in the description box, box below, including where you can purchase your Dixie Belle paints. I am Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings um, with another tutorial. This is a quick way too for your flea market flips, your thrifted flips. You find a bar stool, a leather ottoman, a chair that is not peeling. Now if it's peeling, you're gonna have, you know, it's gonna look different. So if you find something that's just not the color that you want or is a little worn, but it's not peeling, you don't want your material to be peeling. If it's not peeling, give it a try. You will give it a whole new look, customize it for yourself and have it match your room. Okay, so like I said, this is Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs. Please subscribe and click on that little bell down below. That way you're notified each and every time I put up a new video and uh, you get to follow along with the fun. Okay, well love and hugs and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.